Hello and welcome to a Remnant 2 build video. Today we're going to be looking at a shield build, which you should know because that's in the title of the video. And it's all about using shields, obviously, to keep us safe and then use some of the other effects that we can get out of that with our amulet and rings and stuff just to kind of help us out. Now the specific one that I'm doing right here because there's a few different ways you can kind of build it. There's a general overarching like make a shield and then there's a different effects that you can have stacked on you based on your amulets and stuff. Uh, so the one I'm going to be messing with in the video is going to be focused on ranged critical hits and ranged critical damage. Uh, but you can easily pivot this kind of setup into doing like a melee focus if you would want. Uh, I've done an engineer like heavy weapon carry build before while using shields. Uh, you could do some kind of hybrid. There's even a mod thing you could do, but I've never messed with that one. So a lot of flexibility in it. So getting into the equipment, just like always, if there's something you don't have that I'm using, that's okay. Just stick with the basic, basic, just stick with the basic idea of, hey, I'm generating shields and use whatever amulet that you have and work off the different effects there. And I am playing on Apocalypse. I've used the build before when I was like playing through the game the first few times in like Nightmare and it worked a-okay. Uh, definitely like I did it a lot with Melee before and it worked just great. Uh, Apocalypse is a little more shaky, but you know, it still works. Like you can make anything work on pretty much any difficulty depending on how good you want to play. So let's start with the amulet since that's kind of like one of the main pieces that defines what we're doing. And we're going to have on the energy diverter. So while we have a shield active, which should be like at least 90% of the time, we gain a 10% critical chance and plus 15% to all of our damage dealt. So pretty much everything that we're doing should be enhanced because we're going to have a shield on. And this is what I mean by the build is kind of defined by this amulet, even though it's about using a shield to keep us safe. This right here is going to increase our damage. And it's not just ranged damage either. So you could use this amulet while running like a melee build or some other, you know, mod build, I guess, in theory. But there's two other amulets that you could look at too, depending on what you have and what your kind of flavor is you're going for. The first one is a difference engine. While well, you have a shield active, you gain 20% damage. That's a little bit more. And 1.5% of your base damage dealt is lifesteal. So... I've used this one in the past and I like it because it is a little bit more damage and depending on how much damage I'm taking, having that little bit of lifesteal is nice, but the way lifesteal kind of works is kind of meh. I, you know, you're probably just better off using this one, I think, uh, but you know, teach your own depending on what you have and what you feel like, you know, that is definitely an option. Uh, the other one is the uh, not emergency switch, not you, not you, there it is. Kinetic Shield Exchanger. While the shield is active, gain 25% mod damage and generate 15% additional mod power. So if you have a shield active where you're constantly getting a shield on you, you could use this to help you do some mod stuff. Uh, I haven't actually tried it out. I'd be pretty interested to actually try it, but I just haven't taken the time to mess with it yet. So those are like the three main choices I would go with as far as like using a shield. And these things like specifically are about having a shield effect on you. After we do that, right, that's our amulet. That's giving us a nice effect for having a shield on. How do we generate a shield? There's a couple main ways that we're doing it. It's really a ring and our relic. So the ring is tightly wound coil. So whenever we spend 75% or more of our current magazine, we gain a shield for 10% of our maximum health for 5 seconds, but it doesn't stack with itself. Now, I'm using this one right now because I'm going with ranged damage, and the weapons I'm using have a small magazine, that way, I'm constantly applying a shield to myself, even though it doesn't stack. It's at least reapplying it so that I have the effect on me and I'm getting that bonus from our amulet. Now, if you're not wanting to run this, you want to use weapons with larger magazines and stuff, there are some other options as far as rings go to generate a shield. The other main one that I'm thinking of is rerouting cable. So you gain 5% of maximum health as a shield for 5 seconds after spending 25 stamina. The accumulation resets after five seconds of inaction, and you can get up to a 50% shield. So this one is really nice. I've liked using it on like melee builds before, because like if you're using a lot of dodges or, you know, charged attacks, this can quickly stack up. So you can find yourself with a big meaty shield. It's a nice way of being able to consistently apply a shield to yourself as long as you're playing it right. And then you can get those bonuses. Another option I've considered messing with is the power saver. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but I do kind of want to give it a go. At max health, gain 25% chance not to use a relic charge. 
The reason I'm saying this one as a shield generator is because our relic gives us a shield. So in theory, this could allow you to use your relic more frequently while you're at maximum health to just pre-game a shield on top of you and maybe not use a charge at all. There is another option with the excess coil. So whenever you activate a skill, you grant a shield for 25% of your maximum health. It cannot stack with itself, but it lasts for 10 seconds. And I mean, 25% is a pretty good chunk, right? Um, I don't really use this one simply because my skills tend to take a while to come off cooldown. Uh, and I want to be able to easily reapply the shield to myself. So depending on kind of what you're doing in your archetypes, like maybe you could run this one and it would be okay for you. Personally, it was kind of eh, but like I said, depends on the skills and stuff that you have set up. All right, so after that first ring, which we're using the tightly wound coil, we're going to be using the generating band. So we regenerate 3% of our maximum health per second while a shield is active. So since I should more or less have a shield constantly active, we're going to have a good way of regenerating health. And with our relic giving us a big shield, if we aren't using it ahead of like the danger and like using it preemptively, if we take a lot of damage, big shield to protect us, and then we're going to be regenerating a lot of health. So I've liked this one a lot. It does help a lot as far as like, you know, healing ourselves and kind of getting us to top off. Next up, I'm using the Ring of Crisis. When the wearer's health drops below 25%, grant a shield for 25% of our maximum health while it lasts for 10 seconds. So I like this one because it's a kind of nice defensive, oh crap, I'm in trouble shield. Gives you a shield. And then with our generating band, we start regenerating health. It also just, you know, gives us a little bit of time to use a relic, you know, generate a tiny bit more shield with our tightly wound coil. All of those good things to keep us alive. And then for the last ring that I'm using is a probability cord. It increases our crit damage by 30%. The build I'm using has a pretty good emphasis on critical hits. So with this amulet here and a bunch of the other stuff going on, we have a decent critical hit chance. So getting an extra 30% damage on top of it is pretty nice. Here is the relic. It is the shielded heart. So on use grants a shield for 100% of our maximum health. Lasts for 20 seconds or until it's destroyed. Pretty self-explanatory. The runes I have in there, I've got the shield effectiveness, so our shields are increased by 20%. Very nice, since we're doing a lot of shields. Uh, mythic ranged critical damage, so we've got 20% range crit damage, and then range critical chance, increasing it by another 10%. So we have a lot of critical chance stacking up and a lot of extra critical hit damage on our weapons. Now, like I said earlier, I'm going for a small magazine, so I'm using the Widowmaker as a magazine of one. So every time we take one shot with a sing, it's going to activate our tightly wound coil ring, giving us a shield right away. And in addition, it just hits pretty hard. It's got a 10% crit chance going with our other, you know, bonuses that we've got going on. Good weak spot damage but modifier and stuff. Uh, the mod I'm going to be using is Corrosive Rounds so that it imbues it with acid, increasing our crit chance by another 15% for 20 seconds, doing Corroded, blah, 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 blah. And then the Mutator is the same one I used on a crossbow build, Slayer. So every time we reload, it increases the damage of our next shot. Every shot we do makes us reload, so then the next shot is going to be more damage. And at level 10, increases our reload speed by 15%. Uh, if you are running the tightly wound coil, really anything with a small magazine size is going to work great. I would recommend a one magazine slot weapon. So like the Widowmaker, Arbalest, uh, any of the bows are great. You could run like the, um, I've messed with it on the coach gun before, but it has two shots in it. So you have to use both shots in order to actually like trigger the shield effect. Uh, Spore Bloom right here is another good choice. Got a magazine size of one. But if you want to go with the shotguns, I recommend doing like a spread reduction kind of setup as well as far as stats. The melee weapon I have is a Spectral Blade. Uh, I just felt like using that one, but I have the Shield Breaker Mutator on there so that our melee attacks grant a shield for 4% of our maximum health, stacks up to 40%, lasting for 10 seconds. This is the Mutator I used before when I was going through a Nightmare. It can really help to buffer your health whenever you're just like sitting there and trading with your enemies. Uh, I, it's worked really well with me when I have a good amount of life steal too, so that I'm constantly like hitting dudes gaining life back because I'm typically taking damage and then getting a shield that kind of buffers me just a little bit while allowing me to recover a tiny bit of health. Now at level 10 though, the charge attack goes consuming all of your shields to do enhanced damage. I'm kind of on the fence about that because I like, I want to have a shield effect on me. And when I accidentally consume all of my shields to do some more damage, while it's a lot more damage, it is also all of my shields gone, which is really how I'm staying alive. So Kind of on the fence about having that be level 10. Meh. 
And then for my handgun, I've got the Sure Shot. It's a one-shot weapon. Uh, that's pretty much it. One shot. Grants me a shield right away. Helix uh, mod on there. Uh, it's got momentum so that when it scores a critical hit, increases critical chance and critical damage. Up to 10 stacks. At level 10, the critical hits actually give it more stacks. So it's pretty self-explanatory, I would say. For my archetypes, I'm running the Hunter because it does help us with our range damage and range critical chance. All of its uh, like abilities help us as well by marking enemies, giving us more critical hit chance on those enemies. Uh, you know, we can keep our like skills running a long time by using our relics and getting weak spot hits. And in addition, you know, it helps us with our ammos too, thanks to return to sender. So kills with weak spot, critical hits, increase ammo drops and double chance of ammo drops. So it like really, it does really help us as far as like ranged damage goes, especially with urgency and a single shot weapon. It allows us to just keep playing off of a distance. Now I am going to be using the Hunter Shroud. I've been I have a lot of fun with that one. It'll also allow us to kind of break aggro a little bit because while we have shields to keep us alive, it, and we're not typically having a ton of shields active at once because they don't the uh, tightly wound coil doesn't stack with itself. So being able to drop a little bit of aggro and then pop dudes in a weak spot is nice. My secondary I'm running is medic. Really, the main reason I'm doing it is for the healing shield. Again, it's it's shields. Um, but it's got some nice bonuses in with the medic as well. I would maybe say you, you could probably run something else in here to just like maybe be a little bit better, but you know, that's just kind of what I'm doing right now. But if you definitely want to do like a melee shield build, I would probably say run challenger just so you can get the extra like encumbrance stuff. You get a lot of the perks for being close to enemies. The, um, juggernaut ability was bulwark and stuff is really nice to help keep you kind of alive all those kinds of good things uh last armor is just the void armor this is what i felt like wearing and then we've got our traits we got long shot increasing our range triage from the medic increasing our healing which really is only going to be affecting the generating band or at least i'm pretty sure it affects it i don't i don't know that for sure because i haven't really tried to test it but that triage that's kind of part of the reason i'm kind of eh on the medic it's not necessarily doing a lot for us uh, untouchable. I'm going for a lot more evade window things on the setup right now. I did not take bark skin. I did not take the armor perks, traits, whatever. So I'm really just kind of going off of using the shield and trying to dodge. So untouchable, 10 points there. A couple points in strong back to get me a medium weight. Uh, ammo reserves for increased ammo. Uh, maxed out vigor because a lot of our shields are, all of the shields, not a lot. All of our shields are based off of your maximum health. So having a higher maximum health means that you're going to get bigger numbers on your shields. Handling, it's helping with a reload uh, weapon spread and recoil. Fitness for that evade distance. A couple points in endurance for a little bit more stamina wiggle room. Recovery to increase our stamina recovery. Footwork so that we've got a little bit better uh, aim down sights. I've kind of been enjoying that. And then just one point in expertise helping with cooldowns. That is pretty much it. What we are going to do, though, we are going to use a concoction here because I'm trying to be better about using concoctions, using it for maximum health. That way, we've got bigger shield numbers. You could definitely swap out one of these runes, maybe, for, like, a maximum health increase as well. Again, higher shield numbers. But I'm kind of leaning a little hard into the damage right now. All right, here we are at the Twisted Chantry, which... Oh, this place gives me the creeps. Not, I'm not excited for but hey, that's what we rolled, so I guess that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I actually meant to swap something real quick. So I swapped out on my uh, handgun here. I put Tremor on there because one of the things this build kind of struggles with is if you've got lots of enemies, especially lots of guys that like get on top of you, it has a hard time dealing with it because everything we've got is kind of single shot. And yeah, the shields help to keep us alive. But if you get swarmed, I mean, you're just you're in trouble. So I would definitely recommend on one of your guns, depending on what you're running, making sure you have something to deal with a lot of guys. Preferably, a mod, you know, typically does a job really well. So there they are. Let's just drop off his leg right there. And you can see right away we get a critical hit. Bang. You spot damage there. Bang. I mean, typical sniper rifle stuff, right? You just like, ideally, one shot kills if you can get them in the right area. Just like that. You can swap right on over. If you're kind of worried about the reload, just be sure to swap your weapons so that you can shoot them with the other one. Uh, but with the shield going on there, you know, the extra damage, extra critical hit is nice. You know, if you get into a big fight, 
kind of want to pre-game it with your uh, relic just to make sure that you have the shield from the get-go to make sure you're actually getting all of the damage bonuses because that initial shot we take with this gun even though yes it applies a shield it doesn't like dynamically apply that damage buff to the shot we just fired it's it's only afterwards hi friend oh we need to move away from that let's activate our stealth now go over to this one bang one more shot here should do it there it goes two shots and he's dead or was it three i wasn't actually counting and that's a, that's what's nice about the stealth thing too right just kind of break the aggro shoot him in the face it gives you that moment to really focus in on the weak point and then with Hunter as your primary, you keep getting the stealth damage or the stealth duration increase. Hi, friend. There it goes. All right. I mean, so far, so good as far as like not running any extra damage reduction, just relying on the stealth and vulnerability windows and our shields to kind of help us out to keep us alive. Now, I should say, right, because the shields are really nice. Like, don't get me wrong here. They are good because guess what? they keep you alive you know it's extra health because that's really all it is it's just more health it's not damage reduction it's basically just a bonus amount of hp to go on top of what you have and if you get hit though i mean it can get eaten up really quickly so you got to make sure that you're playing it safe There's some more dudes on the left is there an elite over here can't really tell we're gonna drop a mod right here because it looks like there's a fair amount of dudes and i don't really care to like have to deal with that i say it was a fair amount of dudes and it was like two dudes freaking typical one thing that's kind of cool with this build too now obviously it hasn't happened yet because with the stealth ability of the hunter we can pretty safely just start navigating through the dungeon um My brain completely shut down, bro. The the workday is has completely robbed my ability to think. Um, you're right. One thing that's pretty cool about the uh, whole shield setup was what we got going on in the generating band, regenerating a percentage of our max HP with a shield on. If you ever get like hurt and you need to heal up, you just take one little shot, just like bang off to the side, and then you've got a shield and you start regenerating HP. And that's that. And then you heal up. All right. Where's big boy? He's way in the back. One. We got a shield still going. There's actually two elites, which is kind of scary. Dodge the side. Dodge the side. That's going to explode. Ah, I messed it up. Let's run over here. Away out of the line of sight. Use our relic. Pop this dodge roll again, please. Oh, Lord. We're going to use our shield now, too. All right. Let's get him in the head. Bang. Bang. Whoop. Let's swap over here. We've got a tremor to use. Whoop. Whoop. Huh. There we go. That'll help us out there. Dodge away from all those things. Bang. Huh. Oh, I messed it up. Oh, come on. There we go. We staggered him. Come on. Reload. Oh, nice hit. Okay, good. And you can see that shield is allowing us to quickly regenerate HP. That dude's down. Nice. Excellent. And we just kind of clean up the rest. But you can see what I mean. It's like the setup here can be a little scary when dudes are on top of you. Because you're not, like, pumping out huge AoE numbers. Like, our, we are very much focused on single target damage right now. So, if you wanted to run something that was a little bit better for some, like, groups of enemies. You know, maybe something different was, like, a melee setup. If you do, like, probably running, like, the engineer with a heavy weapon like run the one of the turrets and then you use that other ring that gives you a shield when you use stamina then you have your weapon that you're carrying you dodge like a couple times to generate some shields and then your damage is increased and it'll allow you to quickly wear out like groups of enemies because i mean the engineer turrets are really good so you could just honestly at that point just you just put the turret down and it's going to do all the work for you anyways it, but the engineer is just really good. All right. Mm, this fight's going to be... I don't know, man. I don't know. I. It's probably not going to go well for me. We'll, we'll see. Way up over there. Okay. All right. Check. 
I heard a bunch of thumping downstairs, and when you have a child, hearing bunches of random thumping can be a little startling. Alright, yeah, clearing them. You gotta watch out for these AoE projectiles and stuff. Now, we had the Ring of Crisis proc there, which, um, you know, helps to start getting our health, you know, safe, and then recovering it. Bummer. Alright, number two, let's go. Let's pop a relic right now. And you can see on the bottom left, see how it's times two? That's because we have so much shield going on right now that it's basically gone over a single bar of health. So it says times two. There we go. Good damage there. Dodging roll through that. Excellent with the extra invulnerability window. Let's drop a little quake right there. Reload this. Now, the shots are doing a good amount of damage. Like, I mean, we're chunking them down fairly well right now, which is really good because I sometimes have a lot of trouble dealing actual damage to this freaking dude dodge roll forward extra invade window is really helping us out here let's drop a quake right there because that's where the enemies are at let's go ahead and blast him there we we'll blast that dude in the leg get this reloaded let's use our stealth pow pow we're not getting any critical hits right now which is kind of a bummer we got clipped a little bit all right he's flying now all right, we kind of want to make sure that we get our um, our quake recharged because that's going to be a good way for us to like stay safe from all the extra little ads. Uh, madness is being pretty annoying though. Here we go, just playing around this. Let's use a relic right now. Oh, we were a little slow. I was trying to um, keep our ambush ability or stealth ability going by using a relic, and uh, I kind of messed up the timing. There we go. Even on this handgun, getting a thousand damage a shot is really nice. I like it anyways. Bang. Just blast him in the leg, keep him away from us. Bang. Keeping an ear out for the shockwave. Should be coming, I think. Dodge roll forward, extra evade window. Coming in good again. We're going to move to the other side, I think, because there's a bunch of enemies right there behind us, and I don't care to get caught up by them. I would try not to look at him. Wait for the shockwave and then roll forward. Let's get that guy in the leg. Oh, or not. Reload everything, please. Dodge roll back. Lots of distance. We need to create some space and use that column to block his projectiles. Good deal. And then we got to shoot that thing in the leg because, oh, good lord. Oh, come on. Dodge roll to the side. Oh, lordy. Come on. Thank you. Ah, uh, rolling away. All right, activate this. Pow. 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 Rolling. Ooh, that, I'm telling you, evade window, really good. Keeps you from getting clipped by all kinds of random crap. Going stealth now. Get some extra damage going. Wait for it to kind of, there we go. 1,400 damage. Roll to the side, extra distance, keeping us alive. Bang. We need to keep moving, though, because he's got those projectiles. We dodged to the side, the distance helping us out. We're going to actually use a relic now. This will help keep our little stealth going while also shielding us from any extra damage. But if you notice, right then when I used it, sometimes I think it glitches out and I lose all of my shields. And that's really annoying because I should have a ton of shields right now. So let's try it again right here. I still don't have a shield, and I don't know why that's not working i don't know if it's a visual bug i don't know if it's like an actual like hey you have no shield anymore i'm not sure i have noticed that happen it is really annoying i i wish that wasn't a thing keeping an ear out for that shock wave we need to actually let our madness kind of cool down a little bit dodge roll forward pow pow what you could do too is start with your handgun blast and then go over to your sniper rifle and use like the shield from your handgun to make sure you're getting that extra damage and critical hit buff on your big gun. Probably a smart way to do it. Oh, watching out for that. Let's use a relic now. Now it's got a big shield. Oh, haha, the evade distance coming in to save our lives. Drop this here. Excellent. Pow. Let's use this now. Extra damage there. Watching out for projectiles though. Roll to the side. Rolling. Ooh, keep rolling again. Oh, I'm still got to reload. Come on, bud. There we go. Extra shields coming in for extra damage. I've never seen it go under there before. 
That's kind of scary. Rolling over. Rolling. We'll go over to this. Oh, it's still reloading too. There we go. I can't see crap right now, but we're going to make sure our guns and stuff are set. Using our relic now. It's actually working. That's good. Oh, hi, friend. Bang. Whoop. Bang. Keep going. One more shot should do it. There it is. So, solid damage on it, really. Like, you can see we we're pretty consistently getting critical hits. You know, hitting for anywhere from, like, 1,500 and higher. If you catch guys in weak spots, you know, you're going to get, like, a, a 3,000 damage sometimes. Like, you can get quite a lot. Uh, but, I mean, frankly, that was probably some of the smoothest that fight has ever gone for me. So, I would... That feels good. All right. That's pretty much it for the build. This is actually another day. I went, I defeated the Ravager, and I was going to have that in the video too, but frankly, it was just going to be a bit too long. So, yeah, I'm not going to do that. We're going to call it at the end of that, uh, the Chantry fight. You can pretty much see the whole thing that the build's kind of going for. You know, we could, I could have done better with using some of the shielding, like, ahead of time, like, making sure I use a relic, like, before i get into a fight so i have a shield on for 20 seconds i uh, i mean it has good critical hit chance the widowmaker does solid damage you know we get overall just good critical hit damage and stuff so it works out pretty okay for dps i mean the biggest weakness i would say is that if you're getting lots of dudes on you it can be it can be pretty hard to deal with it right i uh, and then also like just even during the ravager fight there's some kind of bug that happens where like if it's almost like if you already have like some kind of shield up and then you use the shielded heart relic it doesn't give you a shield like i i don't know why that's a thing it is really annoying because it should be giving us a huge shield uh so that's pretty obnoxious i i haven't really checked to see if that's like a common thing that other people have seen so i mean if you have seen that before like definitely like share that as well i will try and actually put in like a bug report or something because that just doesn't seem right uh but you could totally try uh like even though i'm relying on this one to try and get a shield up with uh you know doing like most of my magazine damage to get a shield uh you know if you're doing a lot of rolling and dodging in a fight especially like a boss fight because you're gonna be dodging and moving around you could absolutely start going for that uh rerouting cable and just use your stamina to give you a good shield because if you're dodging things you want to be avoiding damage and then getting a shield to help make sure that you're safe too is going to really help out so you know you could totally run it there uh yeah try it out it's fun shield builds are pretty fun i'll do a melee build here too to actually like focus on like i'm using melees and shields so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed it you know saw a couple things trying a couple different new ideas and whatnot Bye and guys. uh you don't need to say that. I don't need my I don't need my actual name floating around out there. Uh, okay. <laughs> but as always, take care everybody. And bye bye. Mm-hmm.